Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today I'm sharing a short video on getting started in amateur field communications. And based on the amount of questions I get on this topic, it seems to be one that brings a lot of anxiety to potential field operators. Now, as we get started with the discussion, I'll tell you, all the video and images you see on the screen during this presentation were all MAM portable micro expeditions I carried out by myself. Most of the time, these outings were done with the least amount of planning, and the gear that I used was limited to what I could carry in my backpack. And honestly, that is the first lesson. The most successful field operators learn to minimize their gear while maximizing their capability. Regardless of who we are or where we're deploying, we all carry a radio, mic, and perhaps a paddle, power, antenna, and a tablet or laptop for digital modes. That's it. Now, I know it sounds like I may be oversimplifying, but honestly, these components are the core to any operator's man portable kit. Another popular topic is location. Many operators ask, where's a great location to set up if I'm just getting started? Well, let's see if I can answer that question. The very first time I went out to operate on HF man portable, I did so with operators from the University Ham Radio Club here in Oulu, Finland. Now, I probably didn't realize it at the time, but my experience with the University Ham Radio Club set the foundation for the success I would have later on in the field on my own. Now, I do realize we don't always have the luxury of other operators or clubs to give us some guidance when we're first setting up or getting started in the field. Now, if that's a situation you're in, you should be thankful because these days we have YouTube. Now, it might not seem like the best way for learning, but it definitely gives us flexible options that we didn't have for learning before. Now, I'm starting to get off track, but let me see if I can make the point here shortly. Now, it's coming up in 20 years since those early days in field comms. But since then, I've operated in the Swiss Alps, I've operated in Egypt from the pyramids, I've operated in Iceland, Lapland, and a variety of different places around the world. Now, with all that said, I'll tell you something which might actually surprise you. Now, you remember those operators from the University Ham Radio Club, yeah? Now, one of the many ideas I was able to take away from operating with them was the concept of operating as close to home as possible for your first few times of field operations. Now, I know setting up or mocking up your station in the backyard might sound kind of crazy, but let me give you a couple of reasons why you might consider doing so too. The simple truth is, it's a lot easier to mock up your station for the first time in the backyard or the garden and fail there than it is to set up five or ten hours away from home for the first time and fail without any chance of recovery. From a newcomer's perspective, the lesson here should be get started with field communications by operating as close to home as possible. Once you start building your confidence and proficiency in the field, you can start operating further and further away from home. So start close to home or at a local park or some other place that's not too far away. Now, before we move on to the next topic, be sure to check the description at the end of the video for my favorite YouTuber field operators. Now, there certainly is a lot of right ways to get started in field communications, but these guys will give you some great ideas. If you haven't figured it out already, portable power is one of those topics that I'm extremely motivated about. I think we'll start off by showing you a few of the commercial solutions that are on the market. Then I'll show you what I've come up with. And finally, I'll show you how to choose the right solution for yourself. I'm not sure how it's pronounced in English, but uh, BioEno Power is a company who provides lithium iron phosphate batteries in a variety of different sizes. They seem to be quite eager to attract the attention of amateur radio operators. And I think that's justified. Amateur radio operators should definitely be paying attention. Now, what makes their lithium iron phosphate batteries interesting is they understand the technology and the batteries already come with battery management systems built in. So they are definitely worth checking out. Next on my list is hardened power systems. Now, to be fair, I've been tough on hardened power systems from time to time. 
Their entry into the lithium iron phosphate market with a QRP Ranger was amateur at best. However, they've now released a product called the Cadet MK1. And this is the first time that I would actually recommend taking a look at a lithium iron phosphate battery pack from Harden Power Systems. On paper, it appears they've learned from many of the mistakes made with the QRP Ranger. Most importantly, they've integrated a lithium iron phosphate battery with battery management system built in. And from my perspective, the most interesting bit is that the lithium iron phosphate battery is actually removable and replaceable by the user. So far, I've only got one question regarding the charge controller used with this lithium iron phosphate battery pack, but for the most part, I'm extremely excited about this product. So keep a close eye out on hardened power system and the Cadet MK1. And next up on my list is Buddy Pole. Most operators are familiar with Buddy Pole's antenna systems, but they do make lithium iron phosphate battery packs based on A123 cells, as well as a variety of battery management systems and charge controllers. These battery packs would be most interesting to the casual operator who goes out for several hours at a time uh, to operate, comes back home, charges up the batteries for the next time. Unlike the BioEno batteries or the Harden Power System Cadet, there is no battery management system embedded in these battery packs. So charging and balancing is done with an external balanced charger. Now this also means there's no balanced charging and simultaneous discharging in the field. But the casual operator only going out for a few hours at a time might not find this to be a problem. So check out Buddy Pole. Now we can take a moment to have a look at my own portable power solutions. Just like hardened power systems and BioEno, I'm also using lithium iron phosphate cells. The only difference is I decided to go ahead and build my power packs myself. Unlike many other operators, I want to look at portable power as a system. So it's important for me how the system and each component within it works together. For casual communications or QRP hiking trips, I use a Genesan GV5 lithium iron phosphate charge controller. I use the Headway 38120 lithium iron phosphate cells, and I use a power film solar panel. To get power to my radio and other devices, I have a power pump distribution center, which we'll review on the channel later on. Now, back in my early days of field operating, I did use AGM batteries and PCM charge controllers. Operators are often tempted to do so without actually knowing that it's doubled the weight and half the capacity of a lithium iron phosphate battery I just showed you. I also had to go through the expensive lessons of budget solar panels and gimmick solar panels before I arrived at where I am today. So the real lesson about portable power is doing the research and asking the right questions. Now those questions might not be completely obvious, so I'm going to go ahead and just give you a few of them to get you started. So the first question to ask yourself is what kind of operating do you want to do? This might be QRP hiking, this might be summits on the air. Perhaps you're going to drive someplace and hike a few hundred feet or meters away from the car. Or perhaps you're going to set up your shelter and operate as a field station for an extended length of time. The next question you'll want to ask yourself is how long will I operate? This question is critically important because you can identify the amount of amp hours or watt hours you're going to need from your portable power system. It's also going to let you know if you need to recharge simultaneously in the field while you discharge with your radio. You're also going to need to decide if you're going to operate QRP or QRO. This is also important because it tells you not only the battery capacity, but the current draw capabilities of the battery you choose. QRP operators have the luxury of longer operating times with more modest batteries. QRO operators require higher current draw and higher battery capacity, which can also limit the range that they're operating on foot. Another good question is, how will I get there? This is an important question to ask ourselves because it lets us know the practical load capacity we have. If we're traveling with a car and we get out on the side of the road and operate, of course we can carry much more gear than if we were with a 
hiking trailer or just a backpack. And if you are traveling under your own steam, please remember you're not only carrying radio gear, you might also carry water, food, a shelter, and things like that. Now this last one overlaps with number two, and that is, do I need to recharge while I'm in the field? And now let's talk about that for a second. If you're operating off-grid, for example, QRP hiking or camping, you're in some sort of survival situation, of course you want to be able to recharge in the field. Otherwise, think about it. As soon as your battery dies, your radio and equipment become boat anchors. Alright, and the last thing guys, don't carry things you don't need. Look, before we close out this video, I have one task for you. I want you to tell us about the way you operate in the field in the comments. Use the comments of this video to tell us how you operate. Perhaps you can tell us about your radio, what antennas you're using, and how you're operating. And if we're lucky, perhaps we'll inspire a few new field operators. And that brings us to the end of the video. PayPal and Patreon supporters, you guys are absolutely magnificent. Thank you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share this video with someone who might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching.